At this point now, I want to go ahead and look at some of the math behind being able to find the volume of a figure revolved about the x-axis. Hopefully you took a minute to watch that animation that I created so that you could see we had a function and we're revolving it around the x-axis very quickly to see what kind of figures we make and what commonalities we have. So in example one, we're given the function f of x equals 3x x equals 0 and x equals 1, and we'll revolve this about the x-axis. So if I draw a figure on a two-dimensional plane here, the equation f of x equals 3x is a nice linear function. My x equals 0 and x equals 1 are both vertical lines, and I should see that I cross here at 0, 0. So my figure that I'm going to be revolving very quickly about the x-axis there is just a triangle. Well, if I take that triangle and revolve it very quickly, what's going to end up is coming out here, you're going to see this come out, and as we notice, we should see revolving it very quickly is going to be a cone. Well, what do I know about that? Again, from the animation, if we put our eyes on the x-axis and look into it, we should see that we have a circle that's created. And if I peel away that very thin circle, the next figure I see, again, is a circle. And I'm going to see that I have an infinite, or I can create an infinite number of circles to make up this figure. Well, how do I find the summation of an infinite number of figures? Well, that gives us the integration. And I'm going to integrate from my lower bound to the upper bound, because remember, integration is a summation of the area of this figure. Well, the area of that figure is going to be a circle. So if I add all those areas up, I can find the volume. So my formula is going to be the volume equals the integration from a to b of pi r squared dx. I have dx because I'm going about the x-axis. Well, what do we know about the radius? Again, from the animation, we should have remembered, we should see, that the radius is going from the x-axis up to this figure or this point. And that point is on that f of x function. And the height or the radius of each of these figures is the distance from the x-axis up to f of x. So the radius is always going to be the value of that function. So in this case, my radius is simply f of x. So my volume is going to be the integration from a to b of pi times the function f of x squared dx. Remembering pi is a constant, we can bring that outside of the integration. So we have pi times the integration from a to b of f of x squared dx. So that's going to be our general formula that we're going to use throughout this section. So how does this play into this equation? Well, we have volume is going to equal pi. We're integrating from 0 to 1 in this case. Our function f of x is 3x, quantity squared dx. I can go ahead and multiply 3x squared out. No need to use integration by substitution with this one. So we have 0 to 1, 3 squared gives me 9, x squared, dx. I can go ahead and integrate. So we have pi times 9x squared is going to be 9x to the third divided by 3, or 3x to the third. Remember, we don't need the plus c because we're going from 0 to 1, which is a definite integration. So these are all volumes. So my overall volume, I can plug in my 1. So again, my pi is going to be out there. Plugging in 1, 3 times 1 to the third is still going to be 3, minus plugging in your 0. So we end up with 3 pi. And that's going to be the volume of that figure. I have just a few more examples to look at. And we'll probably get the calculator out here very shortly because a lot of these become calculator questions. So f of x is going to equal 1 minus x squared 
A is going to equal negative 1 and B is going to equal 1. We revolve it about the x-axis. So as we've done before, I pull out the calculator. I go ahead and type in my function, 1 minus x squared. Change my windows, make sure I have a nice window. I only need to go from negative 1 to 1. So I can go from negative 2 to 2 to be able to see this function. So there's what my function is going to look like. Now, again, we see everything we want to see. So I would even go to my y values and maybe go from negative 5 to 5 so we can see this a little easier. So notice from negative 1 to 1, there's my figure that I'm looking at. And we revolve that around the x-axis. Kind of look like a football, if you think. So how do I find that volume? So there's my figure going around the x-axis. It's going to look something like that going very quickly. So again, I can integrate from a to b. Well, in this case, I'm going from negative 1 to 1. I have pi times that of my function 1 minus x squared squared dx. This is where the calculator is going to come in very handy because we could go ahead and square this out. It just becomes a bunch of math that we have to do. Again, generally going to be a calculator question. So going back to the main screen, I can go to math 9. I'm going from negative 1 to 1 of my function 1 minus x squared squared dx. Now we do want to make sure that we either multiply this by pi or we come back to the beginning, which we can, and insert that pi. And again, we want to use pi and not just 3.14. We haven't done that for a long time, just making sure we know that we want to do that. And there is going to be our answer. So our volume is going to be 3.351. In example 3, we're going to give you f of x equals x, g of x is x squared. Again, we're going between 0 and 1, or we could go through x equals 0 and x equals 1. And we're going about the x-axis. So if I graph these on my calculator, I'm going to go ahead and put in my x, put in my x squared. Again, we're going from 0 to 1. So my windows should be pretty well set. There's my figure there. And there's my figure there. So very hard to see, again, what's happening. So if I change my windows, Maybe instead of negative 5, let's go negative 3 to 3. Now as I graph this, hopefully it'll come a little easier in. So notice here's my little area, that little sliver in there. So here's my f of x equals x, and here's my x squared. If I expand that out just a little more. So here's the figure that I'm creating. Well, what do we notice about that if I revolve this around the x-axis? Well, here, if I come down in this manner here, and it's going to come down like this. Again, there's my figure revolving that very quickly. We should see that we kind of have a vase where we have this cone, but then we're taking this figure out. So how do we find that volume? Well, what I've got to do is I've got to revolve then the linear function f of x equals x, take that very quickly, find the volume of all of it, and then subtract out of it the volume of this figure. How do I find the volume of that? Well, that's my g of x equals x squared. So I'm going to integrate from a to b of my f of x squared. So that'll find the volume of the entire thing and from that, I'm going to subtract my g of x, which is going to now hollow out the inside of that squared dx. What I like to do, and what you see on your note cards, if you've done your note cards, is the volume is going to equal, oh, we've read our pi up there, pi times the integration from a to b of the top curve squared minus the bottom curve squared dx. 
Now, I mean top and bottom. I mean my top curve is going to be the higher Y values, just like we saw when we were talking about area. My bottom curve is going to be the one with the lower Y values, just like we had in our area as well. So what is this going to look like for the volume of this figure? Well, we're going to have pi times the integration. We're going from 0 to 1. Our top curve is x squared minus the bottom curve, which is x squared squared dx. Again, we can do this in our calculator. Go back to our main screen. We're going to have our pi and then math 9. We're going to integrate from 0 to 1 of x squared. We could type this in or remember we can use our vars. Our y1 was x, and our y2 is x squared. So going into our vars, y vars function, we're going to do y1 squared minus, back to our vars, y vars, our function, y2 this time squared dx. Hitting enter, and that's going to give us our volume. So our volume in this case is going to be 0 0.418 or 9 if you round the values. Right. Last example here. And I'm just doing this one because it kind of goes into the E's and natural logs and all that good stuff. So here we have f of x equals e to the x and g of x equals 1 over x. Again, we're going from 1 to 2 or x equals 1 and x equals 2. So again, I'd go ahead and throw this into my calculator. Go ahead and clear out what I had in before. So I've got my e to the x, and I've got my 1 divided by x. I'm going to go ahead and change my windows, because I now I'm going from negative 1 to 2. I won't be able to see that. But I'm going to change also my y mins and y maxes maybe to a negative 5 to 5, to be able to see what that graph is going to look like. So here comes my e to the x, and here comes my 1 over x. Well, where are we going to and from? Well, notice we're going from 1 to 2 over here. We're really not interested in any of this stuff on the left side. So the graph, if we just pull out the pieces that we're looking for, comes up in here, and then my 1 over x comes down. 1 isn't until over in here. So we're going from here to our 2, which we'll call it about over here. So my top curve is going to be the f of x or e to the x, and my g of x is going to be my bottom curve. So now I'm going to revolve this very quickly around the x-axis, and we're going to take this top curve and then we're going to hollow out this bottom portion. So that volume is going to look like pi times the integration. We're going now from 1 to 2 of my top curve, which is e to the x squared. And from that, we're going to subtract the bottom curve, which is 1 over x squared dx. Again, we can go ahead in our calculator, go back into the main screen, we have second pi, or just our pi there, math 9, from 1 to 2 this time. Again, we can go back to our y equals if we need to, to figure out which ones are x and our y, or which ones are y1 and y2. So y1 is e to the x, y2 was 1 over x. So going back to that main screen, I'm going to integrate... I'm going to go to vars, y vars, my function, y1 squared minus my y2. Well, if I can type it in correctly this time. Vars, y vars, function, 2 squared dx. Get our answer, and we end up with a volume of approximately 72.585. And that allows us to find the volume of a figure revolved about the x-axis.